How's it going, everybody? It's Master1994 here, and today we are going to go over my Affliction Meta Lock PvP build in Season of Discovery Phase 4. This build excels at 1v1 and 2v1 situations, but can definitely be beneficial in group PvP situations as well, such as Battlegrounds, because of decent sustained damage, really strong survivability, and some surprisingly strong and fun RNG burst that we'll talk about later in the video. As always, there is a table of contents in the description below, so feel free to check that out and you can find exactly what you want to see. Let's start off with our talent points, and I call this an affliction build because it plays like an affliction build. However, it's actually 20 points in affliction, 7 points in demonology, and 24 points in destruction. Let's start off with the affliction tree. Most of this is pretty straightforward, right? We're improving at corruption. That's a necessity. We also have points for improved drain life. We're improving our curse of agony. And we're taking nightfall, which you'll notice does affect our shadow cleave, which we'll talk about in a bit as well. We're picking up grim reach. So now our spells have a 36 yard range, very important in PVP. The biggest thing that you'll note in this tree is we are not taking suppression. The reason is because we're actually using the shadow specialization rune on our ring. So we, we free up these points. We don't need suppression because of that rune. We'll talk about the runes in a moment. Let's move on to the destruction tree. Uh, again, pretty straightforward, right? Improved Shadow Bolt, which again does affect our Shadow Cleave. So if this procs and they're taking 20% more Shadow Damage, well, that includes our Dot Damage, which is a very big deal. RNG Daces are always nice. Extra Range, Crit, of course, that we're getting in the Destruction Tree and finalizing it with Ruin and Shadow Burn. But just another burst here with Shadow Burn, of course, and you, you don't want to give up Ruin in a build like this either. It gives us a lot of burst, of course, with our crits. Now, you could do some maneuvering here and actually do like a Shadow Mastery Ruin build of old that you would have seen in like cla an actual classic, level 60 classic. Though, as a meta lock, we are doing damage with fire spells, right? With our Soul Fire and Searing Pain. So you're sacrificing a lot of talent points for extra damage in just shadow spells. Definitely would be good. Definitely would be beneficial. But I'm choosing to kind of stay true to meta lock and put some points in survivability. Also, if we did that, we'd have to sacrifice some of our points here in the destruction tree, such as probably destructive reach, shadow burn, maybe, maybe some points in improved searing pain. So instead, we're going to put our remaining points into survivability in the demonology tree with demonic embrace and improved hellstone. Again, if you wanted wanted to go like a 30, um, 0, 21 build of old, you could totally do that. Next, let's cover our runes. Let's start off with pandemic. And really, pandemic, you're talking about pandemic, shadow and flame, and demonic grace because they all have a lot of synergy. Pandemic allows our dots to crit which is a very big deal because one, obviously we're just going to be doing more damage with our dots. But if we're picking up the Shadow and Flame rune, anytime any of our spells, including our dot damage crits, we're going to get the Shadow and Flame buff, which is nice. Uh, just better uptime on Shadow and Flame, right? Also, Demonic Grace is really synergistic with Pandemic because your dots will snapshot the Demonic Grace buff, which means if you pop Demonic Grace and then cast all your dots on the target, those dots are going to have 30% more crit chance for the entire duration of the dot, not just for the duration of the Demonic Grace buff. So you could see some like burst potential here with your dots, really. Uh, if you cast Demonic Grace and then start off Unstable Affliction, Curse of Ag, and a Corruption, and now these dots for their full duration are going to have 30% more chance to crit. Which, of course, in turn will proc your Shadow and Flame and give you more uptime on that. Next, we'll talk about Infernal Armor. Infernal Armor is actually down here. Um, this essentially just gives your armor percentage 
um, makes your armor percentage apply to magic damage. It's a very strong cooldown, especially for Metalock, considering I'm getting close to 65% armor as a Metalock. So if I cast Infernal Armor, which has a one minute cooldown and, a, and lasts 10 seconds, for those 10 seconds, I'm taking 63% less magic damage. With an Affliction Veil, this is big, right? You can pop Infernal Armor while you're dotting your target. And all of a sudden, you're getting your ramp up damage going. And the whole time, you're taking 63% less magic damage. So it's very good with this build and really helps you um, get the ball rolling in your fights a lot easier. Next, of course, Master Channeler with all of our Affliction and Dot um, abilities. We're going to be using Master Channeler. It's our biggest self-sustain, and it's actually a pretty strong damage-dealing ability. Synergizes really well with our next rune, Unstable Affliction, because the biggest downside to Master Channeler is now your drain life can be dispelled. Well, if we're running Unstable Affliction, of course, we have a dispel protection, because if someone dispel, accidentally dispels Unstable Affliction, they're going to take a big burst of damage and they're going to be silenced for five seconds. So people tend not to dispel targets with unstable affliction. Now, this is also a big part of why we actually have a succubus, which is kind of a weird thing for an affliction build, right? But the idea, and if you've been watching my shorts, you've seen this, the idea is kind of to maybe try to start an opener a lot of times with a seduce from your succubus, pop demonic grace with that whole demonic grace um verse we we're talking about unstable affliction curse of agony corruption into a drain life by the time they get out of that seduce and take damage from your first dot you're going to have full dots rolling on that target and they all have a 30 percent increased chance to crit and you've got the dispel protection of unstable affliction um, so if you get to this point in a duel if it's like a 1v1 and you get to this point where you opened with the Seduce, now all dots are rolling and they all have a 30% increased chance to crit. The duel is usually already over at this point, right? You've got so much ramp up damage going at this point. Um, it's pretty hard for them, for most enemies to recover. Next, uh, of course, we have to have Metamorphosis. We're going to talk more about the pros and cons of Metamorphosis in a moment. We've already discussed our crit synergy runes. Mark of Chaos is pretty straightforward. Um, it's just such a good uh, rune. Now, obviously, here it shows 4%. I don't know why the tooltip says this. It it's, it acts like um, the Curse of Elements or a Curse of Shadow in that it's setting 5% resist and 10% extra damage taken, but for all schools of magic. So if we Curse of Agony our target, they're going to be getting this major, major debuff. Finally, our Ring Runes. We kind of discussed Shadow Specialization already um but i've chosen to go with shadow specialization because we use mostly shadow spells right our fire spells are really just our filling searing pain or our burst with soul fire um, but our most of our sustained damage is shadow damage and if we were to have picked up suppression instead and went with the fire specialization well now our shadow spells like shadow cleave and shadow burn have an increased chance to crit i'm sorry to miss because suppression it only afflicts, affects affliction spells. So this is how I'm, try, I'm I'm going with this. And obviously we need the defense specialization rune on our second ring because our shadow cleave gives us spell power based on our defense, which again, we'll talk more about shadow cleave in a moment. Let's continue with the pros and cons of metamorphosis. And we'll start off with the downsides. One of the most notable downsides is that we lose access to fear. Fear becomes our taunt in metamorphosis form, so we don't even really get a replacement for it for PvP purposes. You just can't use fear when you're in form. So if you want to use fear, you're going to have to drop form, and metamorphosis costs a lot of mana. So that's kind of a big deal. Um, but it is, it's part of the reason why it can be beneficial to have a succubus as a metamorphosis metamorphosis lock because we're we're kind of replacing our fear in some situations with seduction the biggest downside though in my opinion is the fact that we can be banished okay so 
and it's going to last a long time. It's going to be a 30 second CC on you. Um, if you're fighting warlocks that are good at banish, a lot of times you just have to play out of form. It's a very big deal uh, and by far the biggest downside to playing Metamorphosis. We also lose access to Shadow Bolt, but we gain access to Shadow Cleave in its place. So it's kind of like a net neutral. Um, I think this is a neutral change, and we're going to talk a lot more about Shadow Cleave in a moment. In terms of benefits to Metamorphosis, um, let's start off with Searing Pain. We get instant Searing Pain. Now, Searing Pain is the weakest spell we have, right? But the fact that it's instant, it, it really serves as a filler spell after our target is already dotted. And obviously, with our Destruction Tree, we've got some really big benefits to Searing Pain with Improved Searing Pain, Devastation, Ruin, and even right the Days. RNG proc is pretty beneficial. So it's actually a really good filler, and I'm glad we have it. Also, our life tap, you'll notice that our life tap gives us 100% more mana. I um, mean, it doesn't affect how much health it costs. So our life tap is just going to be much better. Obviously, it's very easy to sack armor as a metal lock because we're getting 500% more armor from our actual gear pieces, and this includes weapons. This includes rings, though they're in my bags, right? This includes rings that have armor, necklaces, um, trinkets that have armor, all very beneficial for the Metamorphosis Warlock. And again, we get access to Shadow Cleave. Now, Shadow Cleave gives us a lot of benefits. One, I'll say that, you know, our improved Shadow Bolt and our Nightfall, these talents that affect Shadow Bolt, do affect our Shadow Cleave. And Shadow Cleave is going to be a little bit less bursty with our Nightfall, but when we cast it, we're going to be getting spell power based on how much defense we have, which is a very big deal. And a lot of times you might want to like Shadow Cleave before you start a Seduce and your dot rotation so that you have the Shadow Cleave spell power when you're casting your dots. Also, because of the tier bonuses, if you have your tank tier set, your Shadow Cleave hits have a 20% chance to make your next Soul Fire, which is the big burst ability, an instant cast. Okay, so I mean, this is like our version of Pyroblast. So that's a really big deal. I'll also say that that 20% chance to proc, it's per target hit, not per cast of Shadow Cleave. So if you Shadow Cleave multiple targets at one time, there's a really good chance you're going to get an instant soul fire proc, which that's where our really fun, interesting RNG burst comes in, right? It's really in two areas. Um, our nightfall procs with shadow cleave because nightfall makes our shadow cleave deal 100% more damage. So that's pretty cool. And also if we, our shadow, if our soul fire procs, we're going to have an instant soul fire. Next, let's talk about our gear. So obviously we are using tank tier pieces, which we've already talked about our six piece bonus with Shadow Cleave giving us soul fire procs, but let's talk about the other pieces. Our two set piece, as a metamorphosis lock, we can banish ourselves. So we're gonna give ourselves forbearance. We're gonna become invulnerable for 20 seconds. And by the way, this version is a buff. So we can use a cancel or a macro to cancel it whenever we want. It really serves as like Mage's Ice Block or Paladin's Bubble, except it doesn't clear CC. So you're not going to clear stuns or polymorphs or silences with Banish, but you can use it preemptively to deny someone CCs, or you can use it to prevent incoming burst damage, for example. Uh, I might see a Paladin running up to me, think he's about to stun me. I'm going to preemptively Banish to kind of soak that stun. Our four piece just gives us mana based on how much damage we take. So it's just a nice passive bonus. Uh, basically makes it where we don't have to life tap as often. All good benefits. Um, and then after the, you get those tier bonuses, really you can kind of start focusing on just like PvP and DPS pieces if you'd like. Like I do still have some tank pieces like this uh, cape, for example. I've got the Sorcerer's Dagger, which gives us armor right but it's a pretty good dps piece as well um, but otherwise you'll see i've got dps pieces the pvp ranks 
and the PVP trinket, um, PVP uh, DPS necklace. So really the focus is get your tank tier sets and then your off pieces can be PVP and DPS pieces. All right, guys, before we close, I'm gonna do something new. Let's do a too long, didn't read version of the guide. Here are my talent choices. That's the demonology tree and the destruction tree. I chose not to go shadow mastery ruin build because I want more benefits in the destruction tree. I want more sustain. And as a metal lock, we're dealing both shadow and fire damage. So shadow mastery would be less beneficial. Here are my runes. We're taking pandemic, which synergize very well with shadow and flame and demonic grace. We're taking Infernal Armor, which synergizes very well with our Metamorphosis Armor. We're taking Master Channeler, which synergizes very well with our Unstable Affliction because of the Dispel Protection. We're using Mark of Chaos for the very big debuff. And instead of using Suppression in our Affliction Tree, we're using the Shadow Specialization Ring Rune, and we're also using the Defense specialization ring rune because through shadow cleave defense gives us spell power we are also going to be utilizing the set bonuses of the tank tier pieces then afterwards we're going to focus more on dps and pvp oriented gear all right, everybody, I'm going to close here. Thank you all very much for watching. If you're interested, I've been posting shorts of just 1v1, 2v1, and some group PvP interactions with the Metalock. Um, as always, thanks for watching, and I will catch you all next time.